For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, nothing good dwells. For to will is present with me, but how to perform what is good, I do not find. Paul, in Romans chapter 7, verse 18, declares that the flesh, in the flesh, nothing good dwells. In this episode, we're going to talk about this topic and biblical teaching of what is the flesh versus the spirit. We're going to unfold the scriptures. We're going to lay out what the flesh is. We're going to kind of get a biblical understanding of the flesh of man, the anthropology of man. Now, flesh can be translated from two Greek words. One is soma. We get psychosomatic from soma, psycho, som, uh, where there's the the soul and the body. It's the physical flesh. And then there's sarks, which speaks of more of a sin nature or the Adamic nature that we inherited from Adam. That's the flesh that we're talking about here. And that's one of the reasons the flesh is hard to understand is many of us, it's been ingrained into our thinking before we're saved. So we're sometimes blind, even as we get born again, until God reveals it to us in the scriptures and it begins to unfold. What I like to describe the flesh is as your natural humanity, the emotions, the will, the mind, the intellect, the personality needs to be under the control of the Holy Spirit and sanctified and transformed and really nailed to the cross. And so before Christ, we lived in a fleshy existence. And so it can be hard to recognize that it's the flesh of man that strives against God and is apart from God. And that's what we're looking at right now. We're going to talk about that. As Paul said, I know in me, that is in my flesh, nothing good dwells. For, for to will is present with me, but how to perform what is good I, I do not find. It's also described as the carnal mind. It's against God or at war with God. Romans chapter 8 verse 7 says, Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. And so the flesh, it's, it brings about death. Romans 8, 6, to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. So carnal, flesh, fleshly minded, they war against each other. You notice that, I notice that. We're uh, seeing that in our lives every day. Galatians five seventeen, for the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. These are contrary to one another so that you do not do the things that you wish. And because it cannot be subject to the law, Romans 8, 7, because the carnal mind is enmity with God, it it can't be subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. It can't, in other words, keep the law. It can't be, you don't use the flesh to serve God with. And, And so when you think of flesh, okay, you got two people working on an assembly line side by side. One is drawing on the empowering walk of the Holy Spirit. The grace of God is at work in that man. The other man is doing the same work, but he's drawing on his own abilities separate from God, like this: the independent self-life. God, I don't need you. Holy Spirit, I don't need you. I've got the skill. I've got the energy. I've got the ability. I've got the intellect. I've got the personality to get this job done. And maybe not as (laughs) thoughtfully as that, but really they're just leaning on their own understanding, their own ability, their own strength, but they're getting the job done. Now, take that into the church. Can a person... counsel somebody in the power of their own flesh? Yes. Can a person counsel somebody in the power of the Spirit? Yes. That's why we're trying to bring this out is because we as biblical counselors want to walk in the Spirit and not 
independent self-life uh, separate from God. I always use this illustration. I've got Logos Bible software. I spent ten to $12,000 over the period of the last 15, 20 years on software, adding books to my library. I began my electronic library nearly, yeah, really 20 years ago, and it's grown. And if I look at it, boy, I spent a lot of money on that. I also have my physical books, and I love my books. I love to study, to read, to have them as reference material. I can look things up like this study right here, you know, the flesh versus the spirit. And what I can do, though, listen to this, is I can say, I don't need you, Holy Spirit. I've got Logos Bible software. Look at this library. And I could use my mind and I could use my abilities separate from God. Now, how do you distinguish the two? How do you know, am I walking in the spirit or am I walking according to the flesh? So a couple of ways you can see it is Galatians would say the works of the flesh are evident. But the other thing that is hard to discern and determine, Galatians 6.12, as many as desire to make a good showing in the flesh, these would compel you to be circumcised. You know, uh, we're, we're dealing with this in the book of Galatians, only that they may not suffer persecution of the cross of Christ. In other words, as many desire to make a good showing in the flesh, there's a, there's the flesh tries to impress. The, the flesh is wrapped up in self-sufficiency. The flesh wants to keep the law or thinks that others think they're keeping a good religious front. Religion makes people look good to others, but it's pride. It's for, it's pride for man to try to impress God or, you know, he can work his way to heaven or please God by his own good works. And so those are the kind of things that we're talking about. And really, we're just introducing this topic to you because first discerning flesh versus the spirit in your own life guess what that's going to do? You're going to see that in the people that you counsel. And there's no way that a person that is wanting to find victory that is walking according to the flesh, that they're going to have the victory that you want them to have. And so it begins with me. I need to know if I'm drawing upon the resource of heavenly resource of the grace of God working and serving by a spirit, by his power, versus my own innate, edemic nature, by what I inherited in my natural humanity. And then it, it, it can look good, but it's not being empowered by God. The flesh has desires. Galatians 5.16, I say then, walk in the spirit, you shall not fulfill, listen, the lust of the flesh, which is the desires of the flesh. And so there's this desire warring. Uh, Galatians 5, 19 to 20 says the works of the flesh are evident. And you could see that in adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred. But, you know, you're like, well, I don't do any of that. <laughs> but what are we more tempted with? It continues, hatreds, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, uh, heresies, and things like that. So define those words, and we find that, you know what, I might be involved in some of these other areas, and that is clearly the flesh. Um, the flesh has, has not only um, desires, but it has a work that it does. It also has a will. John chapter 1, verse 13 who were born not of blood, nor the will of the flesh, or the will of man, but of God. And so when we're born again, it's of the spirit, not of the flesh. And But that verse shows that the flesh has a will. It has desires. It, it does good works. It has a will. It, the, there's the mind of the flesh. Listen to Romans chapter 8, verse 6. For to be carnally minded, that's fleshy minded, is death. But to be spiritual minded is life and peace. The flesh is at war. Look at Romans 7, 23. But I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity of the law of sin, which is in my members. So it speaks of the, the battle that's there. There's confidence in the flesh. Listen to this, Philippians chapter 3, verse 3 and 4. For we are of the circumcision who worship God in the spirit, rejoice 
in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. And so, you know, though I might also have confidence in the flesh, Paul says to the Philippians, if anyone else thinks he has confidence in the flesh, he's saying, I've got more. And he's, you know, Paul really could boast in his own pedigree, in his own abilities, in his own um, uh, fleshy ability and inclination without God at work. And so he's saying that to the Philippians. The flesh can also glory. So what did we look at? That the flesh has desires. It does good works. It has a will of and a mind of the flesh. It, it's at war with the spirit. There's a confidence, a, a self-confidence in the flesh. There's a glory in it. wants to take the glory is that where we left off? First Corinthians chapter one, verse twenty nine, that no flesh should glory in his presence, but of him you are in Christ Jesus, who became for us wisdom of God and righteousness and sanctification and re- redemption. So there's a willingness of the flesh. Um, it needs to be renounced, and we need to say no for no to the work of the flesh. That's the whole point of saying death to self. That's the self-life that needs to be denied. When Jesus says, deny yourself, take up your cross, he's speaking of the independent self-life. Again, these are introductory matters. You may be more advanced in your understanding of the the flesh versus the spirit. And I want to hear your understanding. If this is new to you, I also want to grow with you in my understanding and our understanding as biblical counselors, because see how important this is. If we're discerning in our own life the difference between flesh and spirit, and I think the Word of God is good at that, because when Hebrews 4, 12 says the Word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword, able to pierce between soul and spirit, the soulishness area is the fleshy area where the spirit is the spiritual area. And I think we can discern flesh and spirit in our own life. A lot of times when you're, you're first walking with the Lord and you're first introduced to these things, they're intermingled. It's hard to tell. Is that from God? Is that from me? Is that the flesh? Is that the spirit? And I think we could begin as we're in the word of God to discern and distinguish the two. And it's important to know the only answer for the flesh is death. You know, as we walk according to the flesh, um, that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. And there's no place for the flesh. It cannot be delivered. It needs to be crucified. The cross is the answer to the flesh. Galatians 5, 24, those who are Christ have been crucified, who have crucified the flesh. Look at Galatians 5, 24. Those who are Christ's, that's you and that's me, have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. And that's why we describe ourselves as being co-crucified with Christ. We've died with Christ when we are saved. The old man is gone. The flesh no longer has the same power just as sin no longer holds us as slaves. We're born again. That old self dies. We are a new creation in Christ, able now, open now to walk in the Spirit, but we still walk and can sin in the flesh. And so we die daily. There needs to be a death to self. And what it is, it's it's kind of like the dead tenant, old tenant, the old man moves out of this tent and the new man moves in, the new creation in Christ, but there's a residual. There's still stuff on the walls. There's a stench. There's stuff in the refrigerator, stuff under the coffee table, stuff in the closet. And it is a residual leftover habits and ways of thinking continue on and they need to be, well, sanctified or There needs to be a transformation. That's the whole point of sanctification is to walk in the spirit and no longer 
in the flesh, and we still can and still do walk in the flesh. And so we need to put to death the deeds of the body. Romans 8.13, for if you live according to the flesh, you will die, but if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. And so we're freed from that old man. He is crucified, but if we've lived like I have, unsaved years, with thinking, motivations of the flesh, selfishness, self-will, self-serving, selfish ways of thinking and motivation. It's hard to break. It comes from the inside, and there needs to be a renewal of our minds, Romans chapter 12, that our minds are renewed, and there is that old way of thinking from the world, the flesh, the devil, the the self-life, and God begins to do the transforming work, the renewing of the mind. And these are the things that what we find as biblical counselors, we need to grow in this, grow in grace to walk in the Spirit because that's the only way we're going to say to those that we serve, to those that we disciple, that Hey, walk with me on this path. You can literally put to death the deeds of the flesh. And here's how you do it. Here's why you do it. Because there's life walking in the spirit, but it's death. It's deadening. It's conflict creating. It's sinful to walk in the, the flesh. Denying the flesh can be called death to self or denying self. Luke 9, 23. Then he said to them all, if anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross daily and follow me. So saying no to self or denying self is saying no to the flesh life. It's not denying myself, um, you know, pizza because I'm on a diet or something like that. It's more saying no to my independence from God. You know, we don't always say it, but we can act that way. God, I got this. I've got the skill. I've got the experience. I've got the willpower. I've got the personality. I've got the intellect. You know, I've got this. And and we don't necessarily say it out loud like that, but we can live that way where we're no longer dependent on trusting in, putting our all in all in his hands we're kind of like doing it on autopilot or on our own. And that's what we need to say no to, what we need to renounce. We need to take up uh, the cross or take the flesh to the cross and daily nail it there. And that's what Jesus said, walk in the Spirit. He says, uh, Paul says to the Corinthian church in Second Corinthians 1, nine. yes, we had the sentence of death in ourselves. Why? That we should no longer trust in ourselves, but in God who raises the dead. Sometimes trusting in ourselves needs to be, um, we'll, we'll create a difficult trial in our life. And God allows it that we would stop trusting ourselves and trust him who raises the dead. Trusting in self is the flesh. And sometimes God allows us to have trials that we learn not to trust in ourselves, but in him who raises the dead. Colossians, Paul said to the church at Colossae in chapter 3, verse 5, Therefore, put to death your members which are on earth, fornication, uncleanness, passion, evil desires, covetousness, which is idolatry. And so, all throughout the scripture, Paul talks about this, um, and as does Jesus, as does the Bible, speaks of there's an opportunity to walk in the Spirit because that's the answer to the flesh. It's not like, okay, let me keep my list of the 12 fleshy things, and I'm not going to do those today. No, the answer is walk in the Spirit, and that's the provision. That's the empowerment that the Christian has for victory over the flesh, walking in the Spirit, yielding ourselves to God, yielding ourselves to His will, His desires over our own desires. And you can't please God in the flesh. Romans 8, chapter 8, verse 7 and 8, because the carnal mind is at enmity with God, it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. So then those who are in the flesh cannot please God. 
you know, you look back to Romans 7, it's the struggle of the Christian who lives according to the flesh, trying to live up to the righteous demands of God. And he eventually cries out, and at the end of chapter 7, who will deliver me from this body of death? He says, thank God it's Jesus Christ. He says, um, you know, oh, wretched man that I am. And I really love that because when a Christian is struggling and he finally realizes that I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind, bringing me into captivity of the law of sin, which is in my member. He cries out, oh, wretched man that I am. He doesn't say, oh, dysfunctional man that I am. Oh, poor victim that I am. He says, I'm wretched. (laughs) Who will deliver me from this body of death? And then Romans chapter 8 is a height of, you know, it takes you to the height of victory. Verses 1 through 11, the Christian who is walking in the Spirit. Read that. And having to choose not to walk according to the flesh, but live according to the Spirit who dwells in us. Because God's patient with you and me, with us. And he reveals the flesh a little at a time. Because if he he revealed it all at once, we would would be uh, blown out of the water, so to speak. So we can grow in the milk of the Word and at the right pace and God shows us this is flesh, this is spirit. As we mature, we go on to meet, the meat of the word, walking with Christ in deeper ways, walking in the spirit, maturing and and growing in grace. And the actions that source from the flesh become more and more obvious. It's sin that we know are displeasing to God and and we're, they're dealt with. And then as time goes on, we realize there are more areas that need to be Uh, rooted out types of the flesh that some that are hard to recognize is striving according to the flesh self-sufficiency self-serving kind of outworkings of the flesh that come from the heart can be more difficult to recognize because we're drawing on the abilities that we just normally naturally have and he said well what could be wrong about that but we need to draw upon the resources of christ it says this in john 15 I am the vine, you are the branches. You who ab- He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. Without me, you can do a few things? No, it says nothing. How, how do, wait a minute, without me, you can do nothing? That's, that's what we're saying, what Jesus is saying, apart from me, separate from me, you could do nothing. In other words, yeah, you could put a man on the moon, you could build a rocket, you could be an engineer, you could be an architect, you could be a mom, a dad, a a worker, you could be a pastor, you could be a leader, a ministry leader, you could be a construction person, you could do so many different things without God. Because, But what does it mean here? It says, for without me you can do nothing. I can do all kinds of things, all kinds of humanity. They build empires and skyscrapers and you know, war machines and armies and, you know, they do all kinds of things without God. What he means, what Jesus means there, you can do nothing that brings him glory that lasts for eternity. That's the point. We cannot serve God, please God, grow in godliness separate from Jesus Christ, doing that work in us and through us. And we can produce, as Christians, pretty good-looking fake fruit by the power of our own strength and mind, intuitiveness, abilities, and our own endeavor— so it's hard to tell. It's really hard to tell. You can't, you can't really um, um, point that out at other people. So as a biblical counselor, we got to understand our walk first, or at least be growing in it. And then I'm, I'm telling you that 90% of what you find in a Christian that comes for counseling, there's the element of discerning the flesh versus the spirit. This is a, a lifetime of study. And I certainly don't say any way, means, shape, or form that I'm an expert at it. But I'm, I'm learning to discern it in myself, and then I'm better able to help others. Again, you can see two people working side by side, doing the same service from God. One might be doing it by the power of the Spirit, the other by the resources of the flesh, and it can look the same. And that's why God says he will judge our works 
whether they're gold, silver, precious stones, or wood, hay, and stubble. And it's a challenge that we want to serve God in the spirit, not by the power of our flesh, because we can make things happen in the Christian life by our own self-sufficiency. We want the sufficiency that's in Christ. Because what does he say? He says, I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. Without me, you can do nothing. What he means by nothing is nothing that pleases him and lasts for eternity. Don't you want to serve God in the spirit that will last for eternity? You know, we are living in a day and age where the the church of the Lord Jesus Christ is being built by the self-sufficient, self-esteem, self-assertive, believing in yourself, following your heart, do anything you want to do that you could put your mind to do, look out for number one. We are living in a really challenging season for the church. And it's whether it's progressive or it's this or it's that, it's a challenge. Is this the flesh or the spirit? I don't want to be point fingers at anybody. I need to be walking according to the Spirit so that I am useful as an instrument in the Redeemer's hand. Hey, God bless you. Hope this helps. Leave some comments. Let me know your thoughts. Let's wrestle together learning flesh versus the Spirit. Bye for now.